Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host between them is Unoriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented Intelligence. But look at this week, of course, um, Lake Center, congratulations out to the city of Rochester for dominating the cheerleading um, cheerleading state competition Division One again. Um, Stony Creek this year takes the state crown. Adams, of course, um, a three-time champion, was second, and Rochester was third. Um, so when you really look at, you know, cheerleading, the city of Rochester is really dominated the um dominated the area when it comes to cheerleading. I mean like especially when you look at the state championship, whether it's been on the um corner of Livernois and Rochester Road, or if it's been on the corner of Adams and Tinkin or um Tinkin Road and Sheldon Road. So, you know, really, you know, that's where the um Division One state championship in um cheerleading has been. Um, in recent years, so like I said, I still think you know when you look at the cheerleading, um, you know when you look at competitive cheer, um, next year, you know they're gonna have to go through the city of Rochester, and I think really that's where it's gonna be. Um, this off season is, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will. We're gonna see what happens. Um, going forward, there. Um, we're gonna recap the districts for basketball. Um, also, we got girls districts starting up, so that's going to be really interesting to see how, you know, each team matches up in the districts. Um, what teams am I watching carefully? What teams am I like, you know, what teams do I think can have a, have a great chance to make a run? Obviously, you know, people are going to talk about West Bluefield. Um, so let's look at the boys basketball, um, the boys basketball scenarios. Um, when you look at this one, and, and you know, and you're looking at the regional now, you see there's only three teams left in the OAA. Um, two of them are having to go against each other. Um, and then the other teams in a different regional. Um, so now that comes of, and you look at, there was some controversy over the weekend. Um, you know, obviously you're looking at the questions of public private school debate. Um, you're looking at the, um, you're looking at, um, you know, and I think, you know, that debate topic really falls in behind with Troy. And the reason why I say this is because Troy's coming in with a 22-1 and record. And they started off losing their opening game in double overtime to Berkeley. Then they go on a 22-game winning streak. Um, and then they run into Birmingham Brother Rice in the district final. Um, where um, Birmingham Brother Rice ended up winning... Um, that game, 59-44 in the district final. Now, Jeff Jason wrote a very interesting um, tweet on X the other day um, explaining his thoughts on the public-private school debate. said he knew he was going to get some heat about it. But, you know, when you look at, and even, the, and even the Troy Athletics page, you know what I mean? They said, like, homegrown versus private. And, you know, and, and I know what they said. Um, so, it kind of gets me thinking, is you look at the public school, private school debate, and do you think that the public, the private schools should have their own division, you know, for the postseason? And, you know, people are going to say, well, why is that? Because you look at the private schools, they, they... They can recruit kids. I mean, like, you know, you see parents, you know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, like, giving out, I mean, you can see, you see the schools giving out scholarships. Um, you know, just basically, like, you know, giving scholarships, giving them the opportunity to play. Um, you know, I mean, like, they pay a lot of money to go into these schools and all that. Um, you know, and, and you know, I don't have any issue with that. Um, I mean, it's 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 the family's choice if they want to go to a private school. I mean, like, but, you know, but the question comes competitive fairness. And that's the big question that a lot of people ask. And I look at perfect example. You have Troy and 
with Troy, obviously, um, with them at Bourbon Brother Ice. You had West Bloomfield taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, you know, and then, of course, you have um, Warren D. LaSalle and um, you know by Detroit Catholic Central um, and, UD, and Detroit University of Detroit Jesuits all still playing right now. And, you know, all the Catholic League Central. I mean, it opens up a good debate um, that should private schools be able to play against public league teams? Considering, you know, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at, obviously, like, you look at a team like Farmington's Mercy, who, you know, Farmington, North Farmington, they got to play them every year. And... You know, I mean, they're right in their backyard. I mean, you look at Groves and Seaholm playing Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, with Warren. I mean, Warren D. LaSalle's in there. I mean, C- Warren Cousin and Warren Mott, um, they got to play them. I mean, in UD Jesuit, you obviously got to look at Oak Park. So, you know, it's, it's a good debate topic. It really is. It's a, it's a good debate topic. Um, but, you know, th- it does open up some questions is should the pub the private schools have their own division and you know there's a lot of legality to this there's a lot of issues here that has to be addressed um for that and the MHA can make that decision and say well you know if you want to give public schools a chance to play you know you know that's fine but but, you know, the public-private school debate, it's going to always be there. It's going to always be there. And, you know, you I have seen public school teams knock off private school teams. And, you know, and, and you look at a perfect example a couple of years ago. Um, I know in volleyball back in 2011 when Lake Orion beat Birmingham Marion, um, which that was an insane upset. I mean, you look at the debate with the private schools, you know, they say, well, they got a competitive advantage against public schools. They go out and recruit. Um, you know, and I think and I think there's some people around here, people around the entire state, they're saying, well, they're sick and tired of it. I mean, they're sick and tired of seeing the Catholic League or, like, Catholic or private schools dominate you, you dominate these public school teams. And, you know, they should have their own division, right? And, you know, and, you know, and I, and I look at the other side and say, well, Keep everything the same as is, you know? So I get both sides of the aisle here. But that's an interesting debate topic, is the private public school debate. Um, I know there's a lot of black and white and shades of gray here. I think there's shades of gray when it comes to this topic. Um, so, I mean, like, so I know both sides to the aisle, and I know, um, and I know, um, you know, and and, and, and um, I think, you know, honestly, you know, this is a good debate topic is, you know, should private schools have their own division? I mean, like, you know, you obviously when you go to like to a place like Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Birmingham Brother Rice or a um, Warren D. LaSalle or UD Jesuit or Nova Detroit Catholic Central, you look at all those state championships there and, you know, and you look at them and say like, well, um, you know. They have those, so it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's real. It's an interesting debate topic. But if they had their own division, they would be going against each other. Um, and also, a lot of other private schools around the state um, would also experience that. Um, so, in reality, I mean, it would be interesting if the state decided to do that route. Um. I would give it maybe like a, you know, but I don't know if I see it right now. I just don't know if I see it because of the, um, a lot of logistics, a lot of legality, um, has to be involved when it comes to saying like, well, maybe we can put these, um, you know, Catholic league schools against these public league schools. I mean, it happened in baseball this year. I mean, last year, you look at, of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, they were in a district with Lake Orion, West Bloomfield, um, you know, and Lake Orion ended up beating them. And Orchard Lake St. Mary's one of the top teams in the state in baseball. So, it'll be interesting to see how 
this process works. I mean, like, especially when you look at particularly football, particularly boys basketball, especially are the two main sports. Um, girls, ba- I mean, girls sports, obviously, you got girls basketball with Birmingham Mary and the Farm Tales Mercy. Now, albeit their situation is going to be a little bit different this week because they got West Bluefield in their district. Um, Ann Arbor Father, Gabriel Richard in Division II. Um, you know, just a lot of, a lot of debate topics when it comes to the public-private school debate. Um, I know we, I mentioned Troy um, with Birmingham Brother Rice, um, and I know how frustrating it was for Troy. And I know Jeff Jason, coach at Waterford Mott, said, um, you know, he made his remarks on um, Twitter slash X. Um, and then there's West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. Um, you know, and I watched that game, and I watched it on the prep. I know the prep does a lot of Catholic League games. Um, they do they do some OA games. I mean, I saw them um on the crosstown showdown between Ams and Stony Creek. Um C Home and Berkeley and Royal Oak and Berkeley. Um so when I look at you know, when you look at the prep, obviously their coverage, I mean like um they do they do a pretty good job. I'll I'll give them that credit. They do a pretty good job. Um but I would like for them, and this is my own honest opinion, um you know, just, you know, maybe do more, you know what I mean? Go, like, instead of just, you know what I mean, mostly Catholic League. I know they try to do everywhere around Metro Detroit. But if it were me, I think, you know, maybe do, like, um, maybe do, like, a game, like, from, you know, from the OA, another one from the MAC, or, like, or another one from the Saginaw Valley or the Flint Metro. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of other good conferences in the state of Michigan that, you know, deserve to get their some attention. I mean, obviously, you look at the Saginaw Valley. You know, you got teams like Davis and Lapeer, Grand Blank. Um, and then you look at, of course, the Lakes Valley. You got Mott. You got Waterford Kettering. You got South Lion, South Lion East. You got all of all lakes. Um, I mean, you got Milford and Lakeland. Um, you know, and then you got the KLAA. I mean, they got, they got, they're a juggernaut league. I mean, you know, Dan Leach over at, um, in Livingston County, he does a really good um he does a really good job over there, you know, with his radio coverage. I, I'm I mean, I really am a big fan of his radio um coverage. Um so I think honestly when you look at this debate, um it's a long debate. Um but I look at this debate as it's black and white and shades of gray. And that's how I look at it. And, you know, if there's gonna be those that are gonna want the cat, the private schools have their own have their own division. I think that's fine, but there's other. This is also going to say, well, the private school should be with the rest of the state. You know what I mean? So and that's that's fine. But you know, I'm I'm a guy who's in between when it when it comes to that debate. Um, do I think it's fair? You know, a team like Troy finishes the year at 22 and two, um, having to go play Birmingham Brother Rice in the district final. I would say no. But, unfortunately, that's how the MHA, when they did their districts back in June, drew it up. And they drew it up. You know, you look at a couple of years ago when Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Birmingham, and Brother Rice both in the same district. I mean, should they be in the same district? I mean, they're geographically close. But they instead put Birmingham, and Brother Rice with Troy and Troy Athens. Um, and... And that's what they did with them. So it's interesting. It's a, it's a good debate topic to ask. It's a very good debate topic. I mean, and I know especially when you look at teams in the Catholic League, you know, having to play against some public school teams. I mean, like you look at, you know, when it comes to the OAA, obviously you look at Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, West Bloomfield, um, you know, and then you look at Birmingham, the Rice Groves, and Seaholm. Um, we're going to have to see them every year. Um, and then Warren D. LaSalle, obviously, you know, with the Mac with Warren Cousin and Warren Mott. Um and um and then you look at um and then nobody Detroit Catholic Central, nor by Northville. And then and then um UD Jesuit with Oak Park. Um now albeit this year Oak Park and UD Jesuit were split from each other, um, this year in the districts, which was surprising. But you know, now you're looking at a possibility, 
you know what I mean? You know, that they, they could do it again next year. They could move him up again next year. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Now, people are going to say, well, you don't put Country Day in that topic. I mean, yeah, they do. I mean, Ferndale's got to play him. Um, and girls, I know Ferndale's got to play him in girls. Um, and then, and then obviously, um, you know, you got Warren, you got Warren Regina there. I mean, like, you know, so that's a very good debate topic is should the public schools have their own league, have their own division? Um, I don't see any issue. Why not? But it'll be interesting to see because if the Catholic League keeps on dominating, winning numerous state titles and all that, then it's going to really increase the debate topic and say, well, maybe they should have their own, their own little division and like you know compete. You know what I mean? Well, as the public league, as the public schools play, um, you know, you know, so it's it's a good debate topic, it really is, it really is. Um, recapping the um districts, I mean, obviously we talked about there's only three teams left in the regionals. Um. Obviously, the one over Adam Detroit Pershing, I was really impressed with Warren Lincoln with the way they played against Ferndale. Um, now Ferndale this year, they were a young team. I mean, they were a very young team, um, but they're gonna have a lot of talent coming back next year. Um, I didn't expect like well, what surprised me was when I looked at the score and you know looking at that and I say to myself, I can't believe what's going on here. I mean, like, i never seen a, Juan, a Coach Juan Rickman team just get dominated like they did against um, Warren Lincoln. I mean, that score was 66-44. I mean, like, I did not expect that game to be a 22-point loss for Ferndale. I mean, like, I couldn't believe it. So, when I look at Ferndale, um, they got by University um, in the semifinals, but you got to give it to the Aves. I mean, the Aves played really well in that game. I mean, they played really well in the district final. Um, but I think when you look at next year, I mean, Warren Lincoln's loaded next year. Um, Ferndale's got, they're going to be okay next year. I think the Eagles will be all right next year. Um, I think for Ferndale, it's just the key for me for Coach Juan Rickman is building program strengths. If, you know, not, and not only, not only just goes for his um, boys program, but also his girls program as well. I think the key for them in the next, I mean, I know their eighth grade team and girls is going to be very good next year. Um, but for Ferndale, it's just, you got to build, you got to have a, you got to have a JV program. You got to have a freshman program. If you can build those two programs, get a lot of kids to at least come out um, and play. And then you can build those programs and you know, you can build programs, long-term program strengths. I mean, you just can't rely a lot on a varsity only like um mantra and be successful. I mean, it's very dangerous. It is very risky. Um, so you know, some and it'll be something to watch for for Ferndale. Um, is building program strengths. Um, building your sub varsity programs. You do that, you're gonna have long term success. And you know, I think that's gonna be the key for Coach Ron Rickman. In the boys' side and also on the girls' side for Coach Keith Paris, um, you know, just building that long-term strength, you know, long-term program strength. If you can do that, um, you're going to be very successful. I mean, like, you just can't, you just can't say to these freshmen, say, okay, you know, you can go up into the fire, go up on varsity. I mean, like, it, it's something, it doesn't always work that way. You know what I mean? You, you see it. You know what I mean? I mean, you can see it. I mean, like, it's not like Rome's not built overnight. You know what I mean? It's like you're, it's like you're putting like, it's like, I mean, I know it's this. Rome is not built overnight, and it's not. So for Ferndale, obviously the loss to Warren Lincoln um, had a very good had a very good year um, for the Eagles, um, winning a Division Two state championship last year. Um, but a lot of questions linger with that program next year. I think Ferndale's still in the mix, but we'll see what happens. Heading into next year with them. Um, district 60, this was at Chandler Park. Um, actually, District 59. Um, Harper Woods, it's hard for me to figure this one out because I'm looking at Harper Woods and saying, okay, 
you're down going down to Division Two. You know, after getting in the district final last year in D1, losing to a very good growth point South team. So you kind of feel, okay, you have experience, but, you know, then you play in the white. Get a night, you're an all right year in the white. Um, but what's going to get me a little bit disturbed is the, <coughs> is the district semifinal matchup against East Point. And... How does Harper Woods lose that game to East Point? How? I mean, yeah, East Point came in with a lot of confidence, but how do you lose that one when the districts, namely in your in your backyard, you had the number two seed coming in there, and then East Point comes in there and beats you? How? How does that happen? I mean, you have Isaiah Lewis, you have Julian Young on that team. And the fact that you gave up, I think you gave up 71 to him. I mean, it's mind-boggling to me that, you know, Harper Woods, they played in the white this year. You know, white's one of the toughest divisions in the, in the entire state. Um, But then you can't beat East Point. East Point in the East Point's a team in the MAC. I think they're in the MAC bronze this year. But still, that's not a good way to lose. And East Point goes on, knocks off Chandler Park Academy, and now they're playing in the um, regional semifinals. So if you're Harper Woods, you coach Tawan Porter. How do you explain it? You can't. I mean, you can't explain it. The fact that you were in your almost in your backyard. I mean, you played at Chandler Park. It's very close to Harper Woods. And you lay an egg against East Point. There's a lot of questions next year with Harper Woods. A lot of questions. Program strength's a concern for this group. It is a big concern. There's a lot of questions right now reigning for Tawan Porter at Harper Woods. A lot of questions. I mean, losing to East Point's not a good feeling. And it's not. So, we'll see what direction Harper Woods goes next season. We really will. Um, District 30. Um, this was the, um, this was the district. Let's go to the Adams district. Um, this district was actually pretty entertaining to me. I mean, like, this was pretty entertaining. It was really tight um, throughout. I thought the Rochester Romeo game was one of the best games I've seen this tournament. Um, you got to get credit to Max Mall for um, not panicking, for shooting um, two free throws to give him the game against Romeo. Um, you know, Rochester... They fought back in that game against Romeo. Um, but now this opens up the questions for Romeo. Because ever since twenty ever since twenty nineteen, Romeo's not been the same team in the postseason. They really haven't been. And you know, whether it's they've had I mean they haven't gotten out they haven't gotten past the district final. On the district semifinals, they've only got past it. They only made the district semifinals once in a long while. I mean, I remember the game. I remember the 19 year, 2019 year, when they um they ran into a very good Oxford team. Um, and then in um 2020, it was Lake Orion who got them. And then 21, they went to semifinals and Oxford got them. Oh no, they got it. They beat Oxford, but lost to um Adams. And then, and then, um, and then 22, um, and then 22, I mean, they escaped Stony Creek, but lost to Utica Eisenhower. And then this year, it was Rochester who got him. So, a lot of questions with Romeo's program going forward. There's a lot of question marks. For Rochester, they're a young group. I mean, they got, they only lose two seniors. Luke Leonis and Evan Crow. Um, but they have Jake Tandy coming back. You have, you have Max Mall coming back. 
You have Logan Pleasant coming back. I mean, there's some pieces there for Coach Nicobola in Rochester to build on. There is. Um, and then on the other side, the other matchup, Stony Creek, Utica Eisenhower. Um, Utica Eisenhower won that one 65-56. Um, Trey Walker had a nice game for Stony. I mean, he had a really nice game. Um, but I'm curious to see what direction that program goes over there at Stony. They got a young nucleus coming back. I mean, Gideon Beers is a very good player. Tyree Smith's a very good player. Interior's the big question mark for them next year. I mean, there's a lot of questions with Stony. Is do they have the size? That's the big question next year. They're gonna have the guard play. That is for sure. But they gotta have some size next year. And I and I don't know. You know, I know they've really struggled under Coach Jeff Owen. They've really have in the last two years. Um, I mean, like, so there's a lot of questions there. Um, that's got to be addressed is where's the direction where Stony Creek is going? I mean, where's the direction? That's the big question I have for them going forward. Um, Utica, I mean, and then there's Rochester Adams. Um, Adams, you know, I thought Adams had a chance to win that district. I really did. Um, they were leading Utica at halftime. Utica found their game in the second half. Um, and they did just enough to hold off Adams, 66-61. Um, you know, the difference was Utica senior experience. And also they shut down Peter Kardashian in the second half. Um, and that says a lot. Really does. It does say a lot. Um... When he can do that. We can shut down Kardashians. He shut down William G. Shut down Trenton Lagarde. Um, I mean. But I like Adams' program as a whole next year. I think Adams is going to be very good next year. Um, they do lose Kardashian. They do lose G. Um, those are going to be tough losses for them. But I like the direction Coach Isaiah Novak has his team going. And I think they're going to make some noise next year. Um. But it's really unfortunate for them to lose that tough district to um Utica um to Utica. Um Utica was also coming in the year at twenty two and and one. Um their their only loss was to Diesel Sal. Um so we're gonna see what direction Adams goes next year, but I think they're gonna be fine. I think long term they're gonna be fine. Um let's go to Oxford's district over at Grand Blank. Um you know, Oxford ran into a very good Grand Blank team, 64-46 in district semifinals. Um, I really like the direction where Oxford's going. They got a lot of experience coming back. Next year, led by Jake Champagne, Luke Stofan, um, Drew Cady. They did lose two seniors, um, including Jay Cady. Um, Jonah Lumberg is going to be a solid player for them next year. I like what the, I like the direction that Coach Joe Fedchork is going is going. Um, I, I think Oxford's going to be back. I really do. But I'll be curious to see where Oxford goes when it comes to, when it comes to June. I mean, when they do the districts in June. is going to be curious to see where they go. I mean, so, but Oxford, but Oxford, I think next year they're going to be very good. I think they're going to be solid. Um, with a lot of experience coming back. Um, proven shooting, um, proven guard play. Um, you got to look at the only issue I have with them is their interior. Um, I mean, like, so that's something that we'll be watched with next year is Oc for the Oxford. Is can they get enough enough depth inside um, the interior? That's the big question for Coach Fed next year and Oxford. Um, district number 23, this was at um, Groves. Um, Groves ended up winning this district. Um, they knocked off a very good Oak Park team. Oak Park, you know, obviously the injury bug really bothered them. They got by Royal Oak in the first round, 51-26. Now, Royal Oak is a team that I, I've got some serious questions with, with them next year. They lose Candy Clark. They got Dylan Hoffman coming back. They got some nice young pieces there. They got some energy pieces, but they still don't have a lot of size, which is a concern. Royal Oak, you know, they're going to be okay, but they're going to have to... They're going to have to find a way, you know what I mean, to, I mean, they have, 
really good success early. I mean, they had really good success early, but then when they got into January, they struggled. So if you go Sharon Smith, that's where you got to address is you got to address, you know, the interior game a lot, but you also got to address, you know, you know, you got to make sure it basketball during the entire season is a game of attrition. And Roy Woke the last two years has really struggled on that side, has really struggled with attrition. And, I mean, and the stats prove it. The numbers prove it. I mean, so we're going to see what direction Coach Aaron Smith goes. But they've got to, they got to address that next year. They got to address, you know what I mean, keeping, keeping success, I mean, sustaining success. That's really going to be the key for Coach Aaron Smith next year is really in, in the Royal program is sustaining success. That's going to be the key. Oak Park is just getting healthy. I mean, Oak Park for them is just getting healthy. That's really where I think that the key is going to be for them, um, you know, heading into next year. Um, and then, of course, there's Groves. Of course, the, um, the um, district. I mean, and then there's Berkeley. Let's go Berkeley first and Groves. Um, Berkeley had a nice year. I mean, they had a really nice year. I mean, big win against Troy. They had some head scratching games where they lost some. Um, but, you know, they had a really nice year. They had some size. They had, you know, I watched that game against Royal Oak where they looked, I mean, they looked good. I mean, their interior play looks good. Um, Their guard play looked good. They were seeing it heavy this year. So I'm curious to see what Coach Joe Sermo has next year. But I'll tell you what, I really like the program he's built over there at Berkeley. Um, it's just, for him, it's just taking that next step. I mean, just getting that next step. Getting a district championship. Bringing that to Berkeley. I mean, it's been a long while since Berkeley won a district title. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I like the direction that Coach Joe Sermo is going with that team. And then there's Groves. I mean, when you look at Groves, um, obviously, everybody getting back healthy. Josh Simpson, John. Um, I mean, like, John Simpson, John, John, Josh Simpson, John Gibson. Um... Paul Hubbard's really been really good for, for, for Coach Mark West's team. Um, Groves, I think, if they keep getting healthier, they're going to be dangerous for anybody in, in the um, regional. I know they got North Farmington, um, which is going to be very interesting. We're going to preview that in a little bit. But I think when you look at um, Groves right now, you got to like where they're at right now with the veteran, with the veteran presence. I mean, that's really where I think that's going to be for Groves is can they, you know, can they keep it up? They got the district championship, you know, can they keep this up? I mean, now they're playing for, they're playing with house money now, which is, you know, and that's always the most dangerous when it comes to a team that's playing with house money. You know, that's always something to really watch for. Um, The district over at Troy, we talked earlier about the Troy Berman brother rice debate. Um, I think when you look at, and then we look at the other teams there in the, in that district, um, see home, you got, I'm curious to see where the coaching church is going to be. I mean, they lost a lot of experience. They lose a lot of, you know, then they got a couple and they, they should be okay next year. I mean, they should be okay. The question for me is who's going to be the new coach over there. I mean, I, that's, I'm curious to see what direction see home goes with their, with their coaching search. I mean, like that is, that's going to be the thing to watch with next year for C home is their coaching search. Troy Athens veteran team this year. Um, you know, but they got some good players in the, in the, in the pipeline. I mean, Nathan Pickett's a very good player. Um, their JV was okay. Their freshman was not, was, was okay this year. Um, I think, you know, it'll be something to watch for is how coach Dave Scott handles this heading into next year. I mean, they could struggle next year, but you never know what Troy Athens. I mean, like they could, they could surprise some people next year. I mean, they really much could. So we'll see what happens. Bloomfield Hills, you know, I really like the direction that coach Brian Canfield has that team going. Um, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be solid. Um, you know, and I and I think West and I think Bloopy Hills. You know, obviously with them, Dura Mason and Philip Muhammad. Um, the interior is a big, and of course you have them, you have them, Brian, I mean, Carter Canfield. So you have three very good players to build on for the future. 
The only question is who's going to be in their interior. That's the big question for them heading in the next year. So, you know, Blue Bay Hills, I like the direction where they're, where they're going. Um, and I think they're going to be a team to really watch for next year is, you know, with behind those three shooters. Um, program strength is a bit of a concern for them. So, but we'll see what happens with them. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think Blue Bay Hills will be a team to watch this off season. Um, we talked about um, the Orchard Lake St. Mary's West Bloomfield debate. West Bloomfield as a team next year, um, they're going to be good. I mean, they're going to be very good. I mean, they got nine. They got not. I got ten returning players coming back, including Drew Wilson, Chris Britton. Um, I think they're going to be scary next year. Don't be surprised if West Bloomfield is going to have a huge say next year in the red. I mean, it all comes down to the district for them in June. And I think really that's going to be where you're going to judge West Bloomfield is going to be where they're, where they're placed in the district in the postseason. Are they with Orchard Lake St. Mary's? Are they somewhere else? You never know. I mean, like, so, so we'll see what happens with West Bloomfield. But, you know, they had a really nice year. They had a great year. Um, I love where the direction where Coach Arnett Jordan is going. He's built program strengths. Um, he's done basically everything right with the book at West Bloom, but he's really built that program over there um, and has really done a good job, you know, getting ready to go up to the red. Did a really nice job. Went up, won the red, and then, you know, and we'll go from there. So for West Bloomfield... You know, they had a really great year. I mean, they really did. Uh, the future for them is bright. So, we'll see what them. I mean, we'll see what West Bloomfield. Obviously, they're going to be they're gonna be a team to really watch for next year. Um, in this, um, for next season for boys basketball. Um, and then let's go to District 24. This was Adam at um, Livonia Stevenson. Um, North Farmington um, winning this, this district. Um, let's look at farming. Let's look at A and T first. I mean, A and T had a really rough year. I mean, they really, they had a rough year, and I think with A and T, um, you really got to look at um, you know, with them, it's just you know, th there's a lot of questions with them next year, and do they need to go down? Do they need to, you know, do they, you know? It's how the direction of that program is over a and There's a lot of questions with that program. Um, and it'll be a challenge for Coach Terrence Porter. You know, they didn't look good against them. Um, they did not look very good against them. Um, Livoni Franklin at all. I mean, that was a 51-35 game um, where they ended up losing that one. It was a tough way to lose that one for them. Um, so a lot of questions next year with A&T. Lumen with that program there. Um, but then the, Farmington's the one that really surprised me, and I'm not being mean here. They were a different team without Greg Grace. When Greg Grace got hurt, you knew trouble was coming. And early on, Farmington struggled with the transition period to Byron Johnson. And... Farmington then, you know, they started to pick things up quickly. They started to pick things up, got on a nice little wing streak, and then they had that injury to Greg Graves, and then that was it. And then they ended up losing that one on 79-67 to Redford Thurston in the first round. Um, and, you know, for Farmington, they got a young team. They got a very young team, a young nucleus. And you look at that team, they're built for the next two years. Next two years, I don't think anybody wants to see Farmington because they're going to be very good. They're going to be scary. I mean, you got proven playmakers. You got Greg Gray's, obviously. Greg Gray's is going to be a star for Farmington. He's going to be a star. Um, so there's a lot to like with Farmington, but it was just the, the key for Coach Byron Johnson next year is to keep him healthy. If he's not healthy, they're in trouble. And that's really where the bottom line is with Farmington is can they keep is can they keep is they gotta keep Greg Grace healthy. Because if not, they're in trouble. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Farmington. 
Um, and then there's North Farmington. Um, when you look at the Raiders, um, you know, they look good against the Voney Stevenson district final. Um, looked all right against, um, you know, looked all right against, um, Livonia Franklin, um, that district, you know, wasn't a strong district for North Farmington. The regional is a whole lot of story. Um, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but for North Farmington, it's a good start for the postseason ops winning a district championship, um, for coach Todd Negotian. Um, so there's a lot to really watch for when you look at the Raiders, um, in their regional, um, we're going to preview that in a, in a couple minutes here. Um, and then let's go to the um, district over at Waterford Ma uh, Waterford Kettering. Um, Clarkston ended up winning a district, knocking off Waterford Ma. Um, big difference there in that one was the injury to, to um, Jacoby Manyweathers, um, where he ended up having to go to the hospital. Clarkston took advantage and ended up winning at 165-56. Um, Matthew Fleiker had a big game for Clarkson in that one. Um, obviously, play Hayden Flavin's been there. I'm wondering what the heck's going on with John Call. Um, taking on a lesser role, um, being on the bench. Obviously, the play of Hayden Flavin's been a big deal. Um, Cole Charter's been playing well for Clarkson. Um, Quinn Rosenberg's been solid for Coach Tim Wasilic. Um, but a lot to like with Clarkson. Um, going forward, but. I'm curious to see what happens with them next year. Really curious to see. Um, and then you look at the teams in the in the uh, in the district. Pontiac, Pontiac had a nice year. I mean, Jimmy Claudio, he's the real deal. Or Jeremiah Claudio is the real deal. I I've loved Travion Peters, what he's done. I like the McFurry brothers. Um, I think Pontiac's gonna be a good. They're gonna be a problem for teams next year. I like the direction Coach Andrew Myers has done with that team. I really do. I mean, they're going to be solid. I mean, they're going to be really, really solid. Um, then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale, when I look at the Yellow Jackets, um, they had a great year. I mean, they won the blue. Jared Thomas has really turned that program around. They found shooters. Jordan Rush is a shooter. Jeremiah Clayton's a sh Jordan Clayton's a shooter. He's a, he's a star in the making to go along with Justin Greer Sykes. Um, there's a lot to like with Avondale. And obviously, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, they're going to be really dangerous next year. I really like the direction that Coach um, Thomas has his team going. Their JV is solid. Their freshman solid. I mean, program. I mean, Avondale's got program strength back. And I know this is year one under Thomas. Could you just imagine what the next few years is going to be like for him? I mean, my goodness. My goodness. And then there's Lake Oregon. Um, when you look at the Dragons, um, you know, falling to um, Waterford Mott in the district semifinal after destroying Waterford Kettering in the first round. Um, they do lose Quay Fly and Ethan Sharkey. Um, those are going to be big losses along with Sam Blakely and Hayden Armstrong. Um, four key seniors that they lose, um, you know, but they do return some key players. You look at players like Zach Parks, Ryan Washlow. Um, you look at Gabe Scott, Nick Galvin, MJ Long, um, you know, and obviously, um, you know, and then you have some young JV talent like, um, like Jack Chashowski and, um, and, um, Nate Jackaloni coming up in the system. Lake Orion's could be a scary team next year. They're going to have a lot of depth. They have some depth and that's going to be, so that'll be key if you want to be successful you know, have deep postseason runs. You got to have depth. You got to have depth. And I think this is going to be a key summer for Coach Jose Andradas, Um, is can he build the, the depth? Can he build the depth from this team? If he does, this Lake Orion team could be really scary next year. And I think they're going to be one of those scariest teams next year to watch for in the, um, in boys basketball. I really think, you know, if they can get consistency, Especially from the guard position, um, then this team can be really scary. I mean, they got the interior game there. They got, they got, they got, a, they got a star in the making. Zach Parks. You have the key for me for next year for Lake Orion is can they find that consistent shooter? If they find that, this team is set. So 
We'll see what happens with the Dragons, but there's a lot to like with Lake Orion um, going forward with this team. So we'll see what happens with them going forward. Okay, now we're going to look at the regional preview here. Um, district number, um, region number seven, this will be at Milford. Um, you got Clarkston taking on Grand Blank. And then um, and then on the other side, you have Milford versus Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, when I look at this district, that was regional on paper. Um, Clarkston Grand Blank looks interesting. I mean, Grand Blank's got a lot of talent on paper. But Clarkson always finds a way, you know, to win games, whether methodically, they'll speed you up if they want to. Um, but they're more a methodical team. I mean, you look at players like Peyton Fitzsimmons, you look at players like Cole Charter, Quinn Rosenberg, um, you know, and you're looking at Hayden Flab was really performed really well for um Coach Tim Wasilik, going up against guys like Bryce O'Mara. Um you look at Grand Blank, and Grand Blank had a terrible start to the year. And then they bounced back, had a big year, um, you know, bounced back, got into a winning streak, um, went in their district, won their district, um, knocking off Oxford and knocking off Holly. Um, of course, Holly up saying Davison was huge. Um, but it'll be interesting. I think that matchup between Clarkson and Grand Blank, that'll, that'll tell a lot. To see where um that matchup goes. Um, but then the winner of that will likely see Orchard Lake St. Mary's and they, they should get by Milford. Um even though it's on Milford's home gym. Um Orchard Lake St. Mary's has played a tougher schedule. Um then Milford, obviously Milford in the Lakes Valley. Um going up against some proven teams like um Water Vermont, Wall Lake Central. Uh, West Bloomington had to get by Wall Lake Central in the district semifinals. That was a heck of a game between in that one. Um, but when I look at that matchup here, it's not a good matchup for Milford going up against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. The only way Milford's got a chance in this game is if they slow the game down and make sure that they, they I wouldn't say play pure Princeton, but almost pretty close to Princeton. For Milford to have a chance to pull up one of the most unthinkable. Now, can it happen? Absolutely. Basketball. Basketball is a game of, you know what I mean? You know, if you can find an upset, you know, it can happen. Just ask Harper Woods that question. Just ask Davis in that question. You know, upsets do happen. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how um it'll be interesting to see how um that matchup goes. I think Clarkson's got a shot against Grand Blank. I really do. Uh, but it's going to be a tall order, though. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if Clarkson makes the regional final. It really wouldn't, it really wouldn't surprise me if Coach Tim Wasilik's team makes the regional final. Really wouldn't. And then District number 6, I think, is that Detroit Renaissance. Um, North Farmington takes on Groves. That winner's taking on either UAD Je Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit, or um, Warren D. LaSalle. Um, I look at this matchup here with North Farmington and Groves. I mean, North Farmington's had Groves' number. Um, won the first meeting, I think, by 15 in Beverly Hills. And the second game at North was an eight-point win for North Farmington. Um, it's always hard to beat a team three times in one year, though. Always is. Um, very curious to see how North, uh, Groves will handle that 2-2-1 full-court trap in the Goshen. Um, it'll be a tall order for Groves, though. I mean, Groves, to me, is a team that's playing with house money. Um, and I think they're going to, you know, and it'll be a t I think it'll be a tight game. But at the end of the day, I think North Farmington gets it done against Groves um, for a third time. Um, but you never know. I think it's going to be a tight game between those two teams. And then on the other side, you got Warren D. LaSalle versus UD Jesuit. Both teams put their regular season meetings in the Catholic League. Um, I think UAD gets this one. I, I just think the Cubs get this one. I, I love the way how the Cubs have been playing. Um, in the, um, they played a tougher district over in, um, they played a tougher district over in, um, you know, I think they were at, um, I gotta figure out where they were at, but, um, but, um, I like where the Cubs have been playing and they played a tougher schedule. Um, um, so it'll be interesting to see how, I think they were at River Rouge and, um, 
we'll see. I mean, like, it'll, it'll be interesting to see where, how this one goes. But I just think for some reason, I'd like D. La, I'd like um, UAD Jesuit to knock off D. LaSalle in this one. Um, D. LaSalle, you know, they're a good team. I mean, like, but still, anytime playing a team three times, it's always hard to do. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, girls basketball, um, districts are starting up here, obviously. Um, you know, teams I'm really watching for in the tournament. Obviously, you know, West Bloomfield, they shouldn't have an issue with their district, they, even with Birmingham Murray and, and Farm Sales Mercy in there. Um, but a team I'm really watching for in that district is Bloomfield Hills. The reason why I'm saying them is because they've been, they've been up and down all year. And... They share. They earned. A, they earned a share of the white title, um, winning um, over C home. Um, now you're having to play in that first day against Troy Athens. Troy Athens is a is a team that's been up and down lately. Um, so I'm curious to see how the matchup is going to be for Coach Chris and Massey when it comes to playing against. Um, when it comes to playing against. Um, you know, against Troy Athens in the first round. That's a team I'm really watching. Carefully, it's Bloomfield Hills. Um, Seaholm, obviously, they got that. I mean, they got Avondale in the um, district semis. Um, but Bloomfield Hills, the team I'm really watching in that district very carefully because I think they can give Troy problems if they get if they knock off Troy Athens. I think they're going to give Troy a lot of problems in that district semifinal if they get there. Um, another team I'm watching for, and you think I may be crazy, Berkeley. Here's why. I absolutely love the way that team is coached. I love the way how that team plays. Um, Berkeley, to me, I, I, that team reminds me of the team a couple that knocked off Detroit Renaissance a couple years ago, and they got they got proven talent on that team. I mean, you look at players like Mavin Nolan, Haley Kirkwood, Avery Wintergarden. Um, Nadia Watts. I mean, you really look at that that program that Berkeley's got, and I'm telling you, they're a scary. They're a scary team. It would not surprise me if Berkeley gets to the district final. I love their draw. I think they're going to get by Redford Thurston. I think they're going to get by Detroit Mumford. And I think they're going to play likely Detroit Renaissance. I think they're going to play Detroit Renaissance. It would be really interesting to see how how um, Berkeley Detroit Renaissance Part Three would go. I mean, that is starting to become a rivalry. It really is. I mean, I know Coach Deshaun Wood has Detroit Renaissance. They're well coached. They're veteran heavy. A um, lot of proven talent on that team over there at Detroit Renaissance. Um, but I'm curious to see how Coach Clay Shaver's team plays in that. Um, in that um district over there. I mean, it really wouldn't surprise me. You know, I think if 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 I think I know I might be I might be regretting this, but I think Berkeley's gonna get Detroit Renaissance a game. I think they're gonna give him a game. I really do. Well do I think they're gonna win that game? Probably not. But I think it's gonna be tight in the fourth quarter in that one between Berkeley and Renaissance. That's how much confidence I have in Berkeley. And that's a team I'm watching very carefully in the um, district tournament is Berkeley. Um, Ferndale, I'm watching in D2. Um, obviously, when you look at the Eagles, um, the way that their season's been, um, their eighth grade class coming up is going to be very good. That's what I've heard. Um, they got three very good players already. Um, do I think Ferndale has a chance against Birmingham Detroit Country Day? They got a chance. I do, do I think, is it possible they can get it done? Probably not, but you never know with Coach Keith Paris's team. So that's a team I'm watching carefully is the um, Ferndale Eagles. What move they make. Um, I think they're going to be a team to really watch for um, in the future um, next season. And then you look at Oxford. I've said this for the past, since June, when the districts came out, I think Oxford has a chance at Grand Blank. It comes down to a mental mindset game for them. It really comes down to that. And for Oxford, 
the key for them is <laughs> they've got to shoot a high percentage. They've got to make sure they don't get into foul trouble. And they got to execute free throw shooting. That's the key for Coach Rachel Breyer and her team if they want to get by Grand Blank. Now, they got to get by Davison first. And Davison's not an easy matchup for, um, and Davison's not an easy matchup for, um, for Oxford. I mean, even though they won 42-34 back in December. So, that's something to really watch for. Um, so, Oxford's a team, another one I'm keeping an eye on. Then there's Rochester. Their district over at Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek, they're the favorite, but it's so hard to trust them in this district. It's so hard to trust them because they've, they've had to win games ugly lately. They've won ugly games lately. They have, they have home court. They have the top seed. <laughs> but they look primed to be upset. And I said this a couple weeks ago. I, there, there's two teams that I think they're primed to be upset in the district playoffs in girls. It's Troy and Stony Creek. I mean, Troy obviously not having a lot of postseason experience. Stony Creek. Everybody's in that district, and they beat everybody in that district. You know, if they got to play Adams in the first round in, in the district semifinals, Adams could give them problems. If they have to play Eisenhower, Eisenhower can give them problems. And then if they get, if they have to play like Rochester in the district final, you know Rochester's going to give them problems. I mean, the last two games Rochester played against Stony Creek, they, I mean, Stony Creek only won that, those two games by a combined three points. But it all, it all has to happen if Stony Creek gets by Romeo. I know Rochester gets by Romeo. Romeo won 16 games this year. One of those six losses with the Stony. So, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. Um, West Bloomington, as I mentioned, I don't think anybody's touching them. I mean, North Farmington, Farmington. I don't, I mean, it's going to be North Farmington, West Bluefield. Um, North, I mean, West Bloomington is going to win that one. And then play either Farm Tales Mercy or Birmingham Marine in the um, district final. Um, and then I think West Bloomfield wins that one, cruises on the regional. Um, and then you look at um, District 29 over at um, Waterford Mott. Everything sets up for a Lake Orion Clarkson district final. Everything sets up for that. I expect Ileana Roback to play for Clarkson in that game against Lake Orion. Clarkson's won seven of nine. Lake Orion's won six of seven. Everybody in the media is picking Clarkson to win this one. Everybody's been, I mean, every expert I've seen, whether it's Matthew Mowry, whether it's whether it's Goose Poop, um, but and this is absolutely perfect for Coach Bob Bridges. Here's why. Because nobody's given them a chance. You look at two years ago in 2021. Lake Orion. Actually, 2022. Lake Orion was the A team in that district. And they went, yeah, they had home court, but they went and beat Adams. Then they had to beat Stoney in an ugly game. And then they beat Rochester in an ugly game and won their and won a district title. You look at there are several players on that team from that team that know that experience. Ryan Palachek is on that team. Lexi Strohshine is on that team. Charlotte Pavlovsky was in the stands. Izzy Walensky was in the stands. So Lake Orion has a chance here because they have a thing called experience on their side. And if you live that experience, you're going to go through that. You have a ton of experience, and Lake Orion has that. So it wouldn't surprise me if Lake Orion wins the district title. It really wouldn't surprise me if they win the third straight district title. So... I think they're going to use that motivation, that media motivation, as a motivator. And you know Bob Bridges is an alchemist. He takes disrespect and uses it against, against opponents. 
So, it'll be interesting to see what happens over at Water Vermont when it comes to districts. So, we'll see what happens. And then let's look at the um, Warren Cousineau district here. Um, you look at the Patriots of Warren Cousineau. Right now, they're the favorite in the district, but I don't know if I could trust Warren Cousineau um, to knock off um, a Groves or a Royal Oak in this one. Royal Oak's got a lot of experience. Um, Groves, we know, is a well-coached team under Coach Allison Heidi. So, we'll see. I think it'll be very interesting to see. Um, but I think whoever wins... The Royal Oak Groves matchup is going to take on um is going to take on Warren Cousineau, who should have no problem in their um in their district. I mean, they, they shouldn't have any problems um until they get to the district final, until they run into Gro Royal Oak and Groves. Um, I think it'll be interesting because both Groves and Royal Oak both split. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens here. Um, in that matchup over in Warren. Um you know, when you look at the Falcons and the Ravens, um, both teams split it, split the regular season series. So it'll be really interesting. I mean, Warren Cousineau, they did play Seaholm earlier in the um, in the um, district, um, knocked off Seaholm. Of course, Seaholm's one of the favorites in the Troy district, um, in the Troy Athens district. So, which that'll be really interesting to see. I mean, like, Blue Bay Hills is one of those teams I'm very much keeping an eye on in that district as well. So we're going to watch, see what happens there, and we'll go from there. All right, man, I'm signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Like again, congratulations to Stony Creek um, cheerleading for winning the state title in Division I. Um, congrats to Adams and Rochester for finishing second and third. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. 